Now let's talk about how we can blend and smooth out the transitions from one plane to the next. We aren't faceted like these planes models, so we can't just leave it at that. We can soften edges between planes a few different ways, and I'm going to show you some of my go-to methods and some of my favorite mediums. When painting in Photoshop, I personally don't like to use an airbrush to paint planes. Instead, I'll usually start with a harder edge brush. This helps give me the more solid structure that I want. When it comes to smoothing out a transition, what I'll sometimes do is color pick from the first plane, and then color pick from the second plane, and then see where they land. I like to see what color could fall between those two colors. This one seems about in the middle, so I try this one. Then I repeat this process as much as I want, until I have several incremental color changes that help me transition from one big plane to the next. Then I can take my airbrush and smooth it out a bit if I want, color picking as I paint on top of these. Another method I use is I pick up one color and lightly color it into the next. Then I pick up the other color with my eyedropper tool and pull that one lightly back into the first color. I continue back and forth like this until the blend is smooth. You can do this for all of the plane changes that need to be smoothed out. In Photoshop, color picking is really easy, and if you have a tablet, you can program the button on your pen to be the eyedropper tool when you click it. Check out my Photoshop Demystify class if you need help programming this. In the Procreate app on the iPad Pro, one of my favorite ways to blend is to use the smudge tool with the soft pastel brush. Using this brush, you can just drag and pull these colors into each other and it will create a beautiful blend. Here you can see this soft pastel smudge technique in action. Again, like in Photoshop, you can also use the method where you try to find colors that would land right in between. With oil paints, you can smooth out a transition by squiggling your brush down the two planes like this. This can create a new transition color. As with the other mediums, you can also mix up a new color that could land between them value-wise. Here I'm mixing up the lighter color with the darker color on my palette to create a sort of middle tone that would fall between them. With soft pastels, you can overlap the colors while you draw, and then you can smooth it out with your finger or a tissue. You can even use Q-tips and stumps for smaller areas. With markers, like the Copic markers I'm using here, you'll have to really have a plan of action with your lighting, which is a bit different than the painterly approach I've been teaching thus far, where you can just kind of slap on color changes and blend them later. With markers, and with a medium like watercolor too, you'll get the smoothest transitions when you work from light to dark. Copics, I think, are one of the best brands of markers on the market, because they're very smooth and buildable too. If you're considering investing in markers, I would recommend purchasing lighter colors than you'd think. Also, buy a few colors near each other on their chart, as this will ensure you can easily get these smooth transitions. Here are the colors I like to use. I started with my very lightest color and slowly but surely worked my way up to the darker tones. I'll be making a class soon on how you can color your characters with these markers, so be sure to look out for that.